What is going on guys? Welcome back to yet another brand new Major Ben video here today. I do hope you guys are having a fantastic day as always. Now, please do subscribe to the channel if you are new here. Please do like this video if you enjoy it. Obviously watch it first and let me know what you think down in the comments below. But without further ado, let's get into 12 Steam Deck tips for every new owner. This covers very basic things from people who may not be that experienced with PCs, all the way up to things that are just genuinely useful for every Everybody. So the first thing is, this is particularly for 64 gigabyte Steam Deck models like what I have. Go and buy a micro SD card before you get your Steam Deck. If you have 64 gigabytes, you are not going to fit any type of AAA game on the Steam Deck as pretty much a large amount of this uh, device is already used up. The actual 64 gigabytes only comes out to leave like 30 gigabytes. So you're really not going to you know, have any AAA games on there. For example, God of War is a 70 gigabyte game. NBA 2K22 is a 120 gigabyte game. So go out and buy yourself a micro SD card. I will do a video discussing best micro SD cards to buy coming in the future. So make sure you subscribe and press that bell icon to be notified for that. I personally have a one terabyte micro SD card. I think it's perfect. I can fit a ton of games on there and I probably won't even need to upgrade my internal storage for a quite a little while. So that is the first tip. Now, next one is turn off adaptive brightness. Adaptive brightness is one of those features that sounds like a really great concept and something is really useful, but it rarely ever works. I found the constant brightness fluctuation to be too distracting and any battery life boost didn't make up for it in my opinion. I found that it was too dark in some cases, it was too bright in some cases. So honestly, just change it to your own brightness setting and just change it. And this leads us on to the third tip here, which is a shortcut to change brightness while you are in a game. So the Valve seems to actually agree that their own brightness implementation, automatic brightness thing is not that great and Valve agrees with this. It implemented a clever brightness adjustment shortcut that you can quickly use to brighten or dim your screen in the middle of a game. It's an awkward button combo, but it really does do the job. You wanna hold the Steam Deck button on the bottom left of your device, and then you want to use your top left analog stick and go up and down, and it will up will make the brighter the brightness you know higher and brighter, and the down will make it dimmer. So. That is a very useful shortcut if you have turned off this auto brightness feature due to frustrations with it. So there's a perfect thing for you there. My fourth tip is kind of a don't do. Don't install Windows. Honestly, if you don't know what you're doing with this type of tech, I highly wouldn't recommend you install Windows. I have a few reasons for this. First of all, not all the drivers are fully supported. I believe they have updated drivers and things are looking better. Your performance may increase in certain games, but overall, what Valve has done with SteamOS is amazing. They've really boosted some games, made them run better with, with SteamOS than they have with Windows. So personally, I would not recommend doing this if you aren't completely tech savvy, because I know that I'm too scared. So basically, something that I did was go in and install a couple of launchers in uh, the actual pro in, um, what's it called? Uh, the Linux desktop mode on the Steam Deck. I installed a couple of launchers and I end up ended up bricking a one terabyte micro SD card. And I am not the first person to to have this issue. So be very careful what you're doing if you are gonna install things like Windows or any launches. I highly would not re recommend doing Windows 10. Uh, I do plan on doing a video in the future talking about my issue with the Steam Deck and how it bricked my micro SD card. So the next one is about graphic settings. Now, I watched uh, Beat em Ups' live stream where he got his Steam Deck and he didn't realize the if that you could actually change many of the in-game graphic settings. Obviously, this thing is a PC. You have all the same graphic settings on a game that you would have on PC because it's running the PC version. So one of my top tips here, as he, a, a tech YouTuber in a way, as a Switch tech YouTuber, didn't know that you could go in and change graphic settings of games on the Steam Deck. So this is one of my big tips. You can actually get Cyberpunk to run at 60 frames per second on the Steam Deck. Same with Witcher, same with Red Dead Redemption 2. There are all videos of these on my channel. You can watch me play Cyberpunk and test it out and watch me play The Witcher and test that out as well. You can get both of those games to run at 60 frames on the Steam Deck. So make sure you have a fiddle with the graphic settings of the game you're playing. If it's running crap, then go in there, tweak it a little bit. You most likely would be able to get it to 60 frames per second. There are some cases where you just can't, but that is something that 
is doable in those settings. My next tip is check for software updates. There are a ton of updates on a very regular basis coming out for the Steam Deck. Every day, it seems at this point, there's a new update for the device. Constantly check, just check it once every evening or once every other evening, just to make sure you haven't got any updates waiting. These do improve performance of certain games. We had an Elden Ring upgrade recently, which ma massively improved the performance of the game. I'm on the beta program where I get some of the beta updates because I like to kind of see what they're doing with that. Um, and they've improved the fan noise uh, drastically from the previous revisions. That whining noise has actually gone now. Um, and it's a huge improvement in my personal opinion. So make sure you are updating your Steam Deck as often as you can because these things are available very, very often. Don't buy untested games. And this is a big one for me for people who are very new with the device. Don't go and buy games necessarily that aren't tested. Do your research, go on YouTube, find the game that you are interested in buying. If it's not supported by, you know, on the Steam Deck when you look at it, then check it out on YouTube. For example, a game like Lego Star Wars says it's unsupported, but actually if you do a certain thing by installing Proton GE through the Linux desktop based mode on the Steam Deck, then you can get this game to run much, much better. But if you are very new to the Steam Deck, a very new user, someone who is not familiar with Linux and necessarily doesn't want to damage their Steam Deck by doing certain things and they just want to stick to the basic Steam Deck, don't buy untested games. Most of the time, those games may be okay, but there are there are some instances where, for example, Lego Star Wars, if you didn't know how to install Proton GE, that game would run and it would be completely unplayable. So honestly, be careful if you're not fully used to tech and you don't want to you know, tweet with things, stick to the fully approved games. It means everything's good to go. Everything will run. You won't have to tweak a single thing, except some graphic settings now and again. Configure the buttons. Now, the Steam Deck has so many buttons, and you should take advantage of them, especially the rear paddles. If you are playing any competitive shooters, even Fortnite, which has recently been added with support to Steam Deck, then those can act as very useful buttons. There are ways you can go in and remap these buttons. Uh, if you press the Steam button, and then move twice to pull up the controller map. Here you can actually assign buttons to various different commands in games. So make sure you check that out, give it a go. It's something that can be very, very helpful. Access the shortcut list, hold Steam plus A. I know wonderful, very, very useful feature in case you aren't following along, holding the Steam plus A brings up a shortcut overlay with all of the hotkeys you need to effectively navigate Steam OS. It critically gives you the button combos needed to use a cursor and left uh, uh, right click button straight away from your controller, no mouse needed. Make sure you check that out when you get your Steam Deck. Get familiar with the controls. It can be very helpful to move around launchers like Skyrim's own launcher where you have to select the graphics options before going in game. It's very useful. Force quit, a force quit button combo. If any of your games do crash, which trust me will happen on the Steam Deck, uh, the shortcut is holding the Steam and pressing B at the same time. This button combo will force quit games that are acting up. Just hold those two buttons whenever you're playing a game uh, and it will shut down, bringing you back to the main Steam OS screen. This is something that will hold useful for yourselves. Another tip is you can connect a controller or mouse. Obviously, no, we know there's a dock coming out for this device. Uh, you may want to start using a separate controller with Steam Deck. Maybe you've already got your own dock and you want to connect it to a monitor and you want to play with like a PlayStation 5 controller. Now you can absolutely do this. You would need to just go into your... Um settings and connect up uh, a controller via Bluetooth. It's a very, very simple thing to do. There's gonna be tutorials on my channel of how to do this. So look out for those and subscribe so you can check out when those are coming. Uh, use the FPS limiter. So if you are struggling for battery life, you've got a two hour journey and you don't wanna eat up that battery life by playing 60 FPS games, AAA games at 60 FPS take a lot of battery life. If you wanna limit the FPS, you can go into the settings on the bottom right and you can go down to the battery icon and you can limit the performance under the frame rate limit section. This can now be also limited down to 40 FPS. There is a video on my channel. I really recommend you check that out. It's a huge new thing where you can actually play games at 40 FPS, limit things to that. 
huge performance in a uh, huge increase in battery life sorry and much better performance than 30 fps and is a much better way to play these games that is it for the tips of this video i do hope you've enjoyed them these are very new devices and something that people may want to watch this just to get to grips with the device i personally think it hopefully was a helpful video for you guys let me know what you think down in the comments below please have yourselves a fantastic day and subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in future videos bye bye for now